It's been a while, everybody, but I am back. I am Jared Hawkins, a.k.a. Jayhawk. This is WWE 2K22, and we're going to do something a little different here today. We're going to actually start a WWE Universe mode, and we're going to bake it off of 1983, just before the expansion began. So what you're going to see here is uh, Saturday, week one of May 1983 with the Universe. I've contributed... I've downloaded as many wrestlers as I could that worked in the WWF at the time in April and May of 1983. Obviously, there are enhancement talents that aren't there. There are some people even be better than enhancement talents that aren't available in the community creation kind of yet. But I did the best I could with what I got. And I took a little, a few liberty based on the roster as well. I'll go over those momentarily. But just to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at here. And I, do, I don't have all the special events cut up as of yet here. I only have really up until first week of June as far as those go. Pay-per-view weren't a thing in 1983. So I've got the televised talk show, WWF, at Madison Square Garden. Uh, the, Spectrum on, the Philadelphia Spectrum on Trigum. And those, those were basically the equivalent of the pay per view at the time. We're going to be using those. So our first Madison Square Garden card will be Sunday week three. And then you'll see for Spectrum card, there will be Sunday week one, uh, week one of June. And I'll continue to add those through as we go along here. All the way up until we finally do our first WrestleMania in 1985 and be, hopefully beyond. Now, I, can, I did take a few. Liberty, as far as the roster go, he 51 on the roster here for WWF All Star Wrestling. If you look at the part, we'll go ahead and edit the division real quick here. So Bob Backlund is the World Heavyweight Champion. Now, you'll see names on here that, well, I didn't think the guy wrestled in May of 83. Uh, Adrian Adonis, Paul Orndorff, you'll see on that list. WWF at the time was beginning their expansion into California. So Adrian Adonis pretty much wrestled exclusively on, the, on those shows at that time. Paul Orndorff wrestled exclusively on those shows at that time. Buddy Rogue at that point was pretty much just working those shows at that point. So I threw those people into there. Kind of make sure that they were available where they wanted to go. The tag team division looked a little weird here. The World Tag Team Champions are the Wild Samoans. Eddie Gilbert and Tony Gurria is the tag team. I don't know why Eddie Gilbert is listed at one and Tony Gurria is listed at number three. Uh, the Moondogs just worked a tour of Kuwait in May. But I threw them in there. The Invaders come on t begin, begin on TV in June, but their first TV taping was, uh, was May 31st, so I threw them in there as well, just to at least have a tag team division of some description. Your Intercontinental Champion, the Magnificent Morocco, and you can come to the guy I threw into there. Pretty, uh, pretty much a guy I threw into there, a guy that weren't wrestling back at the time, a guy that I don't have any additional U4, Johnny Rod, number the number kick contender of all things. So things are going to kind of change around a little bit here. And then, of course, the women champion, the Fabulous Moolah. And there are, there are her top contenders here. So, I am going to go ahead and make one change, a couple of changes to the ranking here. Carson Calder was the number one contender in May. I'm going to go ahead and act, make that change. Maybe. I'm going to go ahead and make that change and make him the number one. And it's not letting me... Why is that not working? Edit ranking. Carson Calder... Can I not make him? There we go. Not, oh, never mind. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll go ahead. 
Okay, now you'll notice I did as much as best as I could use the actual title belt that we're going to get think at this point. The Ike belt it had a green strap instead of a red strap. Big deal. I'm not worried about that. The best I could do with the late 84, early 85 get a tag title belt. Like the 83 get not in the game, so best we could do there. Big green belt, actually one of the default belts that came with the game, which is nice. Five matches, four the televised matches. Nine matches for the pay-per-view event when we get there. Let's go ahead and get to tonight's show. And I'm going to make sure... Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, we're going to change... Grand Winker is not a wrecker. We're going to change that. I, yeah, I yeah I I wanted to have ma the managers that were in there in there go. So. Mick tag there, fatal four he fatal four way didn't get to 1983 either. So that, no. Okay, I'm okay with the tag match there. Backlund and Orndorff again, Eddie Gilbert and Tony Gurria. I don't I don't have the answer to that. I don't know. All right, edit match it, but get. Unless it's something ridiculous, I'm not going to edit the edit the match. Like a Grand Wickard was not a wrestler. I I got him to be a manager. That's what I'm going with with that. Acklin and Orndorff back a team. Okay, Orndorff maybe maybe Orndorff lifted egg a baby face here. I don't know. Okay, this one we are definitely going to change. Start by customizing the participant. We'll do that first. Okay, here's the down cut here. I got all the non-1983 people in here as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can Morocco is kind of stupid to begin with. Yeah, we'll quit for right now. Let me... Let me back up here. Okay, let's move. Let's have Nuka and Makara be the tag team, I think. Do the, do the baby fake and go. Look, uh, I don't care which attire, doesn't matter. Okay. Bear with me. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to. My first time doing the doing it this way in a while. So I'm trying to make sure. Changing, I don't, uh, whatever. Uh, I might have to play that one, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to. I don't want. I I'm going to be Jimmy Snooker for that match. I don't know. Not let me. I can probably fix it. For add 
manager and the reason we want to add the manager where are you at Captain Lou Albano okay was that that difficult didn't think so Okay, well, I kept that a match. Hopefully, it'll let me computer control that when we when we get there, and I can go ahead and make that one on one to counteract for that. I'll be Tatsumi Fujinami against the Tonga Kid. Difficulty can there we go. You gonna make the difficulty can for me, I guess, aren't you? Alright. Firm. Okay, not that much you wanna give me if you wanna throw it like I I'm not trying to make too many changes to the lineup, but like what can I gonna have Grand Ricker Ruckle? Like that's just what can happen. Sure, that'll be fine. I kept that. Okay, and let me see if I can update. I was going to try to put time limits onto it. I don't know if it's going to let me do it. it. Didn't let me do that when I did the tag match here. So, we'll save. And we'll go ahead and start the show. If you're watching live on Twitch, thank you for joining me. Please feel free to make comments in the chat. And ask questions. I'll be happy to respond to you. Ask I see them. Watching the replay on YouTube, please hit that like button, subscribe. Leave your comment about the project that could go along. That could like the longest opening ever. There we go. You got the nice little 1980 VHS filter. Capacity crowd here tonight in a stack card. Oh, it's going to be a wild one, Cole. Let's get down to it. Got yeah, live in New York, New York. I'm ignoring that. We're not doing Madison Square Garden for all-star wrestling taping. Not happening. I don't want to do... Alright, let's go ahead to match number one. I'm not going to control it. It's going to be all based on the... how the computer run thing. And it's going to be tag team action here. Tony Gurria and Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. Very young Eddie Gilbert here taking on the WWF World Heavyweight Champion Bob Backlund and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. These building cream will take a while behind pretty much everybody in the universe and created a wrestler. Another reason I don't want to do... Another reason I don't want to do... 
fatal four-way and stuff like that if I don't have to. There's that blue bar. There we go. Any day now, any day now. There we go. Kept. Get ready! The following contest is scheduled for one fall on the way to the ring at a combined weight of 509 pounds. The tag division has been extremely competitive as of late. Every duo looking to show why uh, they run things around here. Tony Gurria and Eddie Gilbert. You know, on the MFG network, where we'll go with it. I don't. I don't make. The, I didn't make the show up. I, I imported the show. I didn't make the show up. And now I got a dog who doesn't want me to write my notes for what's going on here, so I can keep track of the results and stuff. Because I want to make sure I'm everything working here. And their opponents first from Minnesota, weighing in at 274 pounds, the worldwide wrestling heavyweight champion, Mr. Bob. The WWE Universe. Uh, didn't need the Mister there for uh, Bob Acklin, based on 1979 Bob Acklin, but we'll go with it. Why not? And let's bring out the tag team partner. Oh, beautiful robe. Look at that. And from Florida, weighing in at 269 pounds, Paul Orndorff. Some would say the that guy, whoever did, did that render, did a beautiful job with it. That is, is gorgeous. Contender for any title. They need to loosen up, have a little fun. Heck, maybe even lose a match once in a while. <laughs> that is horrible advice. He says it's all about dominance tonight and plans on showing why everyone backstage should be scared. They're underway started. here. One well, fall tag, tag team action. To make an impact on tonight's event, don't have to look any further I was going to do 15 minutes. Well, like, what I need to do is create the cut the match for the 10 minute, 15 minute tag team match. And, and you, so I didn't think of doing that ahead of time. And I'm, we've already started. I'm not going to mess with it at this point here. Those one counts getting harder and harder to kick out of. Frank Cactus Lord just got the counter getting harder and harder to kick out of when it was the first cover of the match. Nice right hand there by Bob Backlund. He's gonna go over. He's gonna make the tag match to wonderful Paul Orndorff. So Orndorff at this point was just working the California taping. Coming up the California House Show. I'm sorry, but by November he's on TV. And to be getting hit push. Eddie Gilbert in the pink there. Of course, you know, most of you know my cock of Eddie Gilbert. This is really the one of the 
And this might be the first territory outside of Memphis that he ever worked. He a younger wrestler. If we're going to way up the card. He's got a tag team with Tony Gurria here. They're going to be kind of a mid-card act. That's going to be Gilbert peak here right around this time. Eddie Gilbert was legitimately in a car act and covered a very severe neck injury. Missed about four months of action with it. They were pushing Gilbert and Bob Backlund tagged into the action. Protege at the time. Go back and go. And Gilbert got a decent little push for a lower card guy at that stage. Nice or Tony Gurria, long time WWF competitor, WWF superstar. Back was going to let him give up the hot tag there. That wasn't very smart. Now he's going to stop any potential offense off that hard tag, hot tag right off the bat, though. That's perfectly fine. Back blue clock might be done. Tony Gurria, multiple time, I want to say five time tag team champion with four different partners, if I'm not mistaken. Might be four times with three partners. Most famous tag team partner, Rick Martel, they hold about 20. Dean Ho and Hate Deck, Calhoun. Uh, both off the Larry Gabitko, I think, would have been the fifth, fourth partner, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that Larry Gabitko. And if the elbow Here's drop, nicely done on the floor here. Same WWE rule, they have a 10 count. It is very unlikely. Oh, nice monkey flip by back in there. Very unlikely with the computer simulated matches. You're Seven. going to key double count out. Seven. They're possible, they're not likely. Very unlikely. Even le likely that you'll keep the qualification, although they're possible, but they're not likely. Back in and back in by before the count of seven. Yeah, and the real look like he may actually be busted, busted open from that shot in the turnbuckle earlier. A leg drop across the knee, very effective. I'm not sure how, but he didn't He's in off the take any punishment before that point. And there's Mr. Wonderful Paul Lohendorf. Lohendorf still three years away from the biggest push in his career. That big feud with Hulk Hogan. Through 56,000 people plot to the Andy Bay in Toronto. Through a huge TV rating. Trying to make many events in the cage match. Run. Back on to make the cave here. And here's the problem with the tag team matches and why I was hoping to put a Heinrich on the TV match. In tag team matches, matches, that partner can eat, make caves not too much over. Gorilla just muffling back on over the top. European uppercut there by Tony Gurria. Another European uppercut by Tony Gurria. Tony Gurria? Gilbert with the cover. No, They're only a count of two. This is going to come down to who wants it more. I'm trying to think. Tony Korea in the WWE Hall of Fame. He should be. If he's not. Oh, can Championship can accomplish him. Five-time tag team champion. Height that Kahu won. Dean Hill won. Larry Kubicka won. Carl correct there. And then Rick Martel toy. He is not in the WWE Hall of Fame. How is Tony Gurria not in the WWE Hall of Fame? That's insane. He may get the three count right here. That is insane. And he only stays down for a one count. All the punishment he's taken, and yet he's still in this match. Tag is registered. Tag made to Gurria here. They've been working on order for a couple of minutes now. We passed the five minute mark of this matchup, closing it on six minute game. Ooh, small package driver. Didn't hold the pin. I wonder if gonna go ahead and tag Backlund in here. He in the upper left hand corner of the screen there, the Dave Melker star rating. 
That will not go down. It may go up. Gilbert's not going to come in for the cave here. You think Gria's going to kick out? Gria does kick out at two. Backline run is pretty good, but at the same time, there's like a couple of angles, and I'm sure it's partly the filter. But a couple of angles, they look more like Mike Von Erich than Bob Backlund. Orndorff the... Fiddler, winging DDT, nicely done. Float over DDT, my, my, I beg your pardon. Like Orndorff got a finisher, store it up. Sharpshooter? Well, the move kept are not going to be 100%. The save. How Gilbert comes in and makes the save. He's going for the pin. This could be it. Going to go for the pin. And Gilbert had leaving the ring. He's got to go completely out of the ring before he can come in, and that's going to be it. Rondorf and Backlund, your winning team here. You know, they're not, I'm not going to move them. To, I'm not going to put them in like a regular tag team. I'm going to put them in the tag team division. Backlund got that world title, but... They look pretty good there. Got an 04 at the time of the fall. Orndorff pinning Gurria. Let's go ahead and move on to our next matchup. Non-title action, the Tag Team Champions, the Wild Kimon, will be taking on the team of Cooper Fly, Jimmy Snuka, and Mil Macrick in our next matchup. Two, which championship competitor go after... Which championship competitor go after from the, from the edit division menu? Cooper Stark and the team division will be matched together. <laughs> that didn't exactly work out here, but okay. I'm gonna wait for that blue line of death to go through here. I don't know why I call it a blue line of death, the blue loading line. There's the blue loading bar. There we go. Again, if you're watching live on Twitch, thank you very much. We definitely appreciate it. Feel free to leave comments in the chat. I got it up for a reason, so I can see it and comment like I'm going along. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, I'll greatly appreciate it. No matter how you, no matter how you do, rate, review, and subscribe. Well, like and subscribe, I guess. I'm in podcast mode. I do host a podcast, IWTV Guide, come out every, usually every Tuesday, ev Tuesday evening or Wednesday afternoon, going over what's on independentwrestling.tv. And the Epicode is going to drop here within the next 24 hours or so. We cover Uncharted Territory, Season yeah, 4, Epicode 9. The announcement oh, of... W on the way to the ring, accompanied by the superstar at a combined weight of 668 pounds, the WWE World Tag Team Champions. The WWE Universe already reaching a fever pitch of wild moment. We are just seconds away from a non title match up here, obviously. Mexico, weighing in at 276 pounds, the hero, the masked man. You know, this person takes some pride. That worked, Mil Macker. 
few are as gifted in the ring as this performer. Well, Talk about Bill Macker accomplishment here once the match starts. I have a though, IW TV guide wherever you're listening to your favorite podcast. Rate, review, and subscribe. Uncharted Territory, King and Forper Code 9, the announcement of the Independent Wrestling World Tag Team Championship, the unveiling of Ralph the Robot from the Mac Ruckler, 11 matches to Jay Gold marking in my self review. Uh, from New York. Uh, I guess PG Island probably not lifted there. Cooperfly Jimmy Snuka. He is physically and mentally prepared for the task at hand in this big time match. Bella gone. We are underway here. As these two teams get into it, I can almost guarantee this match will be one to remember. The standards for tag team action just keep getting higher and higher around here. Okay, I believe this is Alpha starting off. Can he take the shot? We'll be able to verify for sure. Wild Kamoan, three-time World Tag Team Champion in the World Wrestling Federation. They are. They were at this time in the middle of their third title reign. Oh, and that's waist lock. Aido style couplet there. Mo Macri on the offa. And like the European Forum tag, Jimmy Snuka. Yeah, Snuka and Macri may 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 make them a regular tag team if they win here. Interesting. One, a little early yet, but I like the effort. That's perfectly fine. I don't like the look in his eye here, folks. The Cooperfly Jimmy Snuka. Big splash right off the top. Right off the bat. That's not even the standard Cooperfly leap. It doesn't look like he didn't have a finisher. Off a leg on the apron. Snuka with a forearm shot trying to knock him down. Oh, now we're going to bring him back in. Draping DDT. Cutter. Enough to take a tumble out to the arena floor. Oh. Look at Cork with that great leaping ability. It was right about this time, just a few days after what we would have here. Superfly Jimmy Snuka and the infamous Nancy Argentino incident. I'm not going to talk a great deal about that here if you want to know about that. He did an excellent epic of the dark side of the ring regarding it. Look, look, look for that online. I know it's available. If you haven't already seen it. Like flying. Oh, Alpha. Landed on his feet on that flying head kicker. Oh, look at it. Threw him right in that ring post. There's the count of seven. Snuck it back in. Eight. And Snuka making a mistake here. Snuka had it. Off a still down. Snooker had it. Unbelievably dumb move. And I completely forgot. I downloaded Buddy Rogers, who was managing Snook at the time, and I could have gone with that. Setting him up for the Snook ahead, Kyle Bannon with the flatliner for no apparent reason. I don't like the move cut for the Kamoans, but the Kamoans were not that agile. At least they never acted like it. Oh, just dumped him. Fake first into the ring apron. Talk about the hardest part of the ring. Other right, other wrestler gave the ring post. But. Spanish fly back down. I'm not really like looking either. Looking a little bit, make a little bit more Kenton off it done, but. You're gonna pick him up. You're not gonna do a move. You're gonna go back in the ring. I don't understand. Harsh forearm draped across the middle rope. And down. Now Dika is down. Not gonna give off of the chance to hit the neck breaker. He's not gonna be able to tag out. Ingeniery. He is truly feeling it right now, as well he 
Definitely interesting. Okay, already we get it. Stop looking for adulation for the crowd and get back into the fight. Nuka crawling, trying to crawl over to a corner here, tagging Macrick. I thought he should be tagging out here. He does not. There's a back. He's taking yeah. some good hits. Backcracker, backstabber, whatever you want to call it. There's the form. Smash. Look at clap into the canvas. Tag made Gika. Now in the match legally for the first time here. Only a two count off that victory roll. Mickey Snuka should probably be tagging out here as well. He's not doing it. Macrick now in the ring here. Macrick, one of the all-time legendary competitors in Mexico. By this point, he's mostly working the California House show. When WWF moved into St. Louis the following year, he worked St. Louis quite a bit. Other than that, you don't see Macrick a ton in the WWF after this point, but... I want to that he's on the, rock, the starting roster here. Oh, kick to the chest. It's looking like I'm going to have to make Matt Kirk and Snook a team here. Springboard leg drop. And if you beat the World Tag Team Champion, you should get a World Tag Team title shot out there. Not only... Oh, got the abdominal stretch and the leg. Pulled on top of it. Nicely done. Alpha finally coming in to make the save. He took a dear sweet time with that. Alpha going to make the save. Count of two. And again, I, part of the reason I want to have tag time limit on these TV matches. What the hell was that? I don't see record today doing that. They've got Hika doing this in 1983. That looks like he's acting for Hika to get to his feet. We're no trying to put him away with something here. Winging flatliner. One, two, off of coming in. He does not make it in time. No Macri, Pin Fika, Middle Macri, and Jimmy Snuka win the matchup here in seven minutes and 15 seconds. This right pairing can certainly do wonders, and make no mistake, this was a wonderful. Okay, now we're have to make that a gonna have to make that a regular tag team and put them in the tag team division. Now, if you guys were hoping I was going to redo the Nook of Morocco feud, you're going to have to hold off a little bit. And we got to get them in the tag team title picture. And now we got Lady Action. Fabulous move like if Penny Mitchell go ahead and go to it. Nick will be your world women champion wearing her moolah belt. And I apologize for the delay between matches. Like I got everybody okay, created a, a off the community creation. The community creation take a little bit longer to, a little bit longer to load.
patchouli. I love you. I will give you pet. But if you're acting for anything besides pet, you need to lie down. You need to lie down until I'm done. I only gave my coat for a little bit over an hour for that. I need to get it done. Got about 35 minutes yet on this before I have to shut it off. I want to get it done, okay? Go lie down. Don't give me the puppy dog guy. Go lie down. Nick, I told a dog not to give me a puppy dog guy. I'm trying to have some Let's fun see here. What she can do. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making her way to the ring from South Carolina, the women's wrestling champion. And guys, this looks to be a match with major implications. And that'll be the WWE. fabulous Mula, the, the women world woman wrestling champion. Title defense or not, talk about Mula once. Always leave it all in the ring. We'll talk about Mula once the match starts. Alright, they tried. Penny Mitchell. Well, why don't they get in the ring and prove it, huh? Uh, that's what they're doing right now, Corey. Well, the tag matching we're going about seven minutes. I wouldn't expect it to go more than about three or four, though. But Nick Cartel. I can one on one match and go 15 minutes in this game, too. You can never tell. And this is a woman that has Bella gone. We are underway her. here. Fabulous Mula. Yeah, I'm not even going to get there and talk about the controversy around her. She's been creating such a buzz. And the girl, okay, they, she, that little that. mistreated her at them. On the case, she didn't. In the ring. You can I really think it's one of the things that kind of... Kind of go from Perkin to Perkin. A shock down your spine. Uh -oh. Little won her first Look women's title in 1950. Pick in Baltimore, Maryland. Had a couple of unofficial title lockouts there. Yeah, the match had happened. She locked and won the belt, but no, most people never knew about them until much, much later. Going far. WWF at the time was concurrent. She'd been champion for 27 years at this point. Penny Mitchell here in Greenfield, Missouri. She would have been 22 years old at the start of the year. She's likely one of Mula train girls for her to be here. She's pushed into the corner. Uh -oh. Penny at one point, co-holder of the Women's Tag Team Championship with Wendy Richter. Penny Mitchell is actually the original fighter lady. And she goes into like a formula tarantula here on the rope. She was actually the original fighter lady. She was supposed to be under the fighter lady Mac. That fateful night, Madison Square Garden, November 85, where Mula wound up wearing the Mac instead and regaining that title in the original WWF crew job. Only a count of one there. If that. She oh, nicely done there. Mitchell countering it, landing it on her feet. Quick exchange of counters there. What a punch. Little uh, Alabama clam. That was all sorts of nasty. Mitchell had the advantage most of the way here, but Lula got the advantage now. Gonna drag her into the ring like she's gonna pin her and then duck it, pin her. Pick her up. Oh! Interesting little move there. Oh! That could do it. One, two, three. Mula wastes no time there. Two minutes. 
49 second. Fabulous Blue League, your winner. Here is your winner, and she walks away with a big win. Definitely a cause for celebration. What an impressive victory. Yeah. Mula, your WWF Women Champion winning this non title match. Two and a half star. Winning that match in short order. If you can correct them, Buddy Roger Corner for those of Buddy Roger can do not reflect those of the World Wrestling Federation or this station. With that, we go to Buddy Roger Corner. No, actually, we don't. We go to a tag team matchup. Leilani Kai and Invader number one against Moondog Bot and Guggen Star. Interesting. Loading bar can load anytime. There we go, we got the loading bar finally loading here. Any day now. There we go. Nick tag team action here. One fall contest. And here is Invader number one. We will have some discussion about Vader, Invader number one. In a little bit here, for those of you who do not know who he is. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from San Juan, Puerto Rico, weighing in at 275 pounds, Vader. Hey, where's the horse? I think they just went with Vader for it. I got that work. The high horse this superstar always seems to be on. Did Jerry Lawler write that line? Vader number one. He stepped through the rope here. Every match as if it's the biggest one of his career. He definitely plans to steal the show tonight. Looking out among the crowd. Brick and Brody here. No good on cave. Okay, so in fairness here, up we're not gonna be at Madison Square Garden for a an all star wrestling taping in 1983, but that building they got up there, that Madison Square Garden, that's just, it, it, that just, it, it is. And her partner from Tampa, Florida, Lillian Carey. Gentlemen, this has been Leilani Kai, who is the Can only woman in WWE. Oh, 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 actually, her. I can't pay that act. I can't actually pay that. Okay, she's the only woman in WWF history to hold both the single and tag team women title. Uh, Wendy Richter, I think, did hold the title when the WWF took over, at least briefly. One of 
the most anticipated matches we've had in quite some time. And this woman is right, the Leilani Kai competed at WrestleMania 1 and at WrestleMania 10. The only woman to do that. First woman to compete at first woman to compete at two different WrestleMania. And from Memphis, Tennessee, weighing in at 304 pounds, Munoz, Dog, Spike. You know, this person takes some pride in their work. Moon Dog Spot, Larry Latham. Gifted in the ring as this performer. Wow, you are Former tag team exactly. champion in his own right I'm sure with partner Rick. Actually, a replacement Benjamin. partner was Moon Dog Rick and Moon Dog King. That initially won a tag team title. Moon Dog King, unable to get across the United States border from Canada, rather than relinquish the tag team title and. Back up with the lineage, they just found a new moon dog. Larry Latham named Bot. And from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Susan Stan, the WWE yeah, Universe star. Days, hours, and minutes. Cowgirl from Texas. To start, and the countdown is almost over. She's going to step in the ring here momentarily. A major match ahead of her. She plans on proving exactly why she's worthy of big matches like these. Okay, so WWE 2K22 rule comply for the big tag team matches. The men can only wrestle the men. The women can only wrestle the women. Uh, man, hit a woman coming on that qualification. Not making that up. We got a mixed tag match starting, and things are about to get. Invader number one to start off again. Oh, look at this. Look at the suplex. Moondog against the. Oh, Moondog fought there. Okay, the playing shot on the top rope. That gets way too early. Two. Only, a two count. Only a count of two. Go, Invader number one, Jose Gonzalez, legend in Puerto Rico. He might still wrestle in Puerto Rico. They don't seem to ever retire in Puerto Rico. And there's the tag, and you can skate, and you can start automatically coming in and play. Lenny Kai gets the tag. For infamously, Jose Gonzalez, Invader number one, a man who murdered Bruce Brody. One, we get two. Let me count of two. No celebrations yet. Again, check out the uh, the Keegan one episode of Dark Side of the Ring about Bruce Brody. Break everything down in great detail. We can start up to the top rope. Diving headbutt. She got Kai hurt. Into a half Austin crab. All the punishment there onto the weight in the back. See the body flashing, leg flash a little bit as well with the, with the crab. And Lenny Kai able to get out of it. She's going to try to tag out to Invader 1, and she does. And that's the problem you run into in the match. you got to keep them out of that corner, keep them from making the tag. That's the contact rule being what they are. You don't necessarily have to worry about somebody making a cave. Like he would a fear tag. Springboard, springboard, cross body splash, going for the cover. One, only kind of one. He's going to start going in to make that cave. He's staring his opponent down, getting into that zone. Believe it or not, if this were actually happening in this era, Invader number one would be the baby fake. It was a five year for the Bruce and Brody situation. Vader up to the top rope, flying body press. I would have tried to hold the pin, he got off of him. 
kick to the back there, boot to the fake. Clutching the wrist. Just absolutely. Do a hammer lock, pull him back on the wrist as well. And then double knee to the back. Well, nice counter there by Moondog Bot. Bring it down a theory for forearm smashing. He tags out, so now and he's going to tag out to Moon Star. That's going to bring Leilani Kai in under the big tag team match rule. Chop. Whip over the top rope, go by Leilani Kai. Now, normally I would be recommending the Moondog Bot keep her out on the floor, but you make contact with the qualification, can't do it. Moon Star pulling a hair at the end time. Uniquely done there. Went for the chop and got blocked there. Four on the back by Leilani Kai. Yanking her back in. Tag to Invader number one. That's going to bring in Moondog Fodic. Well, Leilani Kai got bodies in the red. I don't blame her for tagging out there. Oh, knee left by Moondog Spot. Nicely done. Well placed. Kick to the gut. Bot kick to the another chest there. The another kick to the chest. Oh, Short close line. I actually thought he was going to go for a try to take the mask off for a second there, but no, into a nerf hold. Cranking that uh, on there here. Dar coming in. Doesn't make any contact. Move a distraction. Oh, shot right to the back of the head by Moondog Bot there. Oh, but Vader one pick him up. Five with K. Drop him behind. Level from the forearm. Beautifully done. I'm trying to pull him to the kind of ring. I presume to try to make try to make a cover here. Not even a one count. Number one throw Moondog Bot in the corner. There a shot. Plank him up on the top rope. Right and that right hand knocked Body off the top turnbuckle all the way out to the floor. Whoa! Wing shot. Cover called Genton on the spot. That was nicely done. Bot trying to fight back. Pop out a desperation knee to the mid connection. And a little step kick to the back of the head. Both men need to watch that referee 10 count. Four. Well, maybe not. If he's going at four after all that, probably they probably don't have to worry about the count. But count it at five. Pot going to work on the leg. And we're down to the proverbial wire here, guys. There's the whip into the guardrail. Now looking at eight, can Vader number one make it? It's going to be close. No, body actually going back out after break the count, go back out after him. Again, I would have gone. I would have gone for the count out. But right apparently didn't want it. Into the Throwing him into that steel barricade. And Vader one fighting, trying to fight back. Vader one rolled back in the in the ring. Probably will make it back in. If we turn the count for that for the count out here. There's the four count. Vader number one rolling underneath the rope. Body going to come out after him. There can take down the full mount and just green and punch it down on him. Ramming spot into the field post. Down he go. Need to the mid section. Double act candle right to the back. Body back at kick. Vader tried to grab the leg of Bot and referee caught trying to warn him instead of counting. Body gonna come back out after him now. Just get rolled underneath the rope. And Vader one finally returning to the ring. 
Their number one going for the Guplex Bowl. Dropped him knee first and tagging in Leilani Kai. He had the at spot on the run. I wouldn't have made that tag, but. Snapmare takedown. You can start up and working over the only guy pretty well the entire match on but then the other on the other guy of the ring, Invader One working on Moondog spot on their end of the ring the entire time. Whoa, that looked a lot cloaker than it should have been in that situation. Two and three quarter on that one. Leilani Kai out of frustration gonna tag in Invader number one. Invader number one, a cat hit way with body most of the match. He got caught with the short clothesline there. Invader 1 can get one good headshot in. He can probably get the pin at this point. Body with another short cloak. Mine, he's going to go for the pin. Only a count of one. Making a long matchup. The longest matchup of the night so far. Approaching the nine minute mark of the contest. Now we got the camel clutch. They'll work on the back. Also work on the head and chin. The head and neck. Vader one break out of it. Does the, the leg trip? Got to find a way to get out of this. And for slam, fall away slam, maybe. Oh, nope, dropping him through first on that top rope. Might have been a good spot for the pin. He's not going for it. Oh. He gets the tag. Form of a V trigger, and instead of going for the pin. Which he probably would have had. He tagged up Leilani Kai, and that is why I wanted to get up time limit for these matches. And I have to make sure I have that get up to do moving forward. More than like Kuplet. And I'm gonna go off mic for just a minute here. With my lovely fiance calling me. I'll be right back. Logan can help you with that. Fine. Had to clean up. Had to clean. I already cleaned up after the puppy for him. No. I got. I got out of the shower. No issue. I came downstairs to get the game cut up. Left something upstairs. Went upstairs to get it and had a pile on the living room floor. And I, and I had and I had her when I came home for like ten minutes. Yeah. I don't remember. I didn't feel it when I got home, but I. I assume she got fed this morning, but I can't remember if I fed her this morning or not. Oh, no wonder, no wonder she's mad. I will have, I will have to do that when I go upstairs. 
The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Japan. Weighing in at 267 pounds. The Dragon. Matches like these with talent of this caliber. This is why sports entertainment is in art form. I finish up the match I'm working on. I will get her taken care of when we get home. I understand. All right. Maybe too. And his opponent right. from the Isle of Samoa. Weighing in at 282 pounds, Tama Tonga Kid. Everyone in this match is competing at such a high level. All right, I'm back on mic here. I'm not like mic is that far away from me. I don't know how much of that conversation you heard, but they're letting Kai Pinning Kuhn can start 10 minutes and 14 seconds to win the mixed tag team match. That's the longest match of the evening so far. We're on to our main event here, Tatsumi Fujinami from New Japan Pro Wrestling. At the time, WWF had a working agreement with New Japan that allowed Fujinami to come over on a fairly regular basis. Former WWF Junior Heavyweight Champion when that belt existed. Taking on the Tonga Kid, who would later become Mylander Tama. Now, Tonga Kid here has not yet debuted on television. He doesn't debut on TV until September or October, if I remember correctly. But if I also remember correctly, he's only 17 years old at this point. He does wrestle uh, Samoa number four on the house show around this point. Although never, never was associated with the actual Samoan family. Referee tried to stop Fujinami from going outside, and Fujinami just got through you. I'm going out anyway. Had to lock takedown into, a, into the commission. Tiger Kid eventually rolling out of that commission to get out of the hole here, but it's been matching all Fujinami so far. There's the dragon screw there. Think about the talent you have not seen on the show so far that on the Rocky. Uh, he took Magnificent Morocco off the card. Since they want to have Grand Wicker Ripple instead of just being his manager. One count there by Fujinami. But we have not seen the Intercontinental Champion Magnificent Morocco on this broadcast. We have not seen Rocky Johnson. Not seeing Adrian Adana. Nice headlock applied. Look at this athleticism. Oh, nicely wow, done. That's pretty cool. Did not see Big John Stud. Did not see Andre the Giant. Yeah, this has to decrease. Blackie Freddy Blackie, a ton of guy. Cards of Slaughter, not on this card. Looking to take flight here. I think it's not out of the ordinary for TV at the time for the final match of the card. Oh, Fujinami micking the knee drop there. Tama, Tama Tonga Kid too far away from him. Now Tonga Kid trying to make a comeback here. But not out, of, not out of the norm for this time frame for a uh, television product to end on a main event match that maybe you wouldn't think of a main event. Maybe on paper, Tatsumi Fujinami against the Tonga Kid, a myth match. You have, I've been watching a lot of, 19, of, of 1983 WWF as of late, which is why I've had the inspiration to do this particular universe. I cannot tell you how many episodes of All Star Wrestling 1983 ended with Salvatore Belomo beating somebody. Tiger Kid got a lot of offense coming on Fujinami here at this point. Only kind of one there. Fujinami missed that knee drop, and it's been all Tonga Kid ever since. Raking the eye there, Michael Cole complaining, ringside. 
That can referee if he's blind. Yeah, probably he can referee. Another kid now up top. Wait for Fujinami. Flying body track. If he covered him, he got him. He's not going for the pin there. He might be going for the flying that flying flash. He hit that. That should do it. No. Two and nine tenths, if not closer. Fujinami just getting out of that one, but that, that was almost a major upcut. And we gotta think at this point we're gonna see that up that Fujinami had almost no offense. Fujinami now finally getting a couple of shots in. Yanking down on the arm. Fujinami with the elbow drop there. Fujinami with the elbow drop again. There's been more wear and tear to the body of the Tonga Kid, but the Tonga Kid's gotten more offense again. Yeah, call it that good. A spinning back kick going immediately for the cover. Tonga Kid trying to end this. Fujinami had a hand on the bottom rope. Referee did not see it. And Tonga Kid's going to get that, get that major upset. Hopefully the cover is on the replay here. What an incredible victory here. Fujinami and... Well, Tonga Kid looking for the handshake. Fujinami going to give it to him. Coach, tremendous show of sportsmanship. That was a big up at four minutes and 41 seconds. The Tonga Kid. That's going to be our, our that's going to be a rivalry here. Very interesting. I'm gotta admit I'm in very surprised at how that one goes. 441 the time of the fall, the Tonga Kid with the big up gut. It had looked like Fujinami had the hand on the bottom rope. At least I thought he did. We're not getting a replay, so it doesn't matter. Go ahead and egg it. And that was our first show. Go so, Tonga Kid in the main event with the big up win over Takumi Fujinami. Not just that. Let's go ahead and go back over the green call one more time, real quick here. Bob Backlin and Paul Orndorff defeating Tony Gurria and Eddie Gilbert. Orndorff pinning Gurria at 7 minutes and 4 seconds. It was Mill Mackdorff and Jimmy Snuka defeating the tag team champion at the Wild Kamoan in 7 15 with Mackdorff Pinkika. Women's champion Fabio Mula defeating Penny Mitchell by pinfall in 2 minutes and 49 seconds. Shortest match of the night. The longest match of the night did Nick Gender tag Leilani Kai and Invader number one pinning or defeating Moondog Bot and Kugan Star when Leilani Kai pinned Star in 10 14. And now we got a potential rivalry brewing between these two gentlemen, Takumi Fujinami, looking in an upcut to the Tonga Kid in 441 with some controversy in that finish. Week two will be coming up momentarily here. That's Jimmy Snook against Mr. Fuji. Bob back against Iron Mike Sharp, non-title. We'll probably change. I kind of. Yeah, I mean, they're in. Get on Grand Wicker directly, aren't they? We'll change. Well, that one we will change. Mo Mackerk and Ivan Putke will be our main event next week. I'm going to go ahead and get out of there. We're going to go ahead and go into the universe. And the first thing we are going to do... Got a new tag team we have to form here. I want to do this while I'm thinking about it. I 
No, I'm accurate. But I don't know how I was labeled a super heavyweight. I don't know how they did, why, how they got that one figured in. Jimmy Snuka. Crowd reaction cheer. I'm not worried about entering good for the Aikant video. That's fine. Got the new tag team is formed. Edit show. Edit division. The Invaders are now your number one contender to the tag team championship officially. I'm not going to be upset by making that change there. Looking macro now in the tag team division. It does take him out of the Intercontinental standing, but I mean, let's be honest. It's the only people I don't have in a, in a division right now are the four managers, because they were interested in having Grand Rick to be a wrestler, but it is what it is. Gautama, number one contender of the Intercontinental title with that win earlier. Can't argue with that one. That can be Fujinami down at the bottom. Can't argue with that one. Not after that law, but... And Paul Orndorff is your number one contender of the world title, and that he's been teaming with Bob Ackland. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how everything plays out from here. All right, we're going to call it a day from here, folks. Thank you for joining us on the stream. With, next time I come with, I join you, hopefully be tomorrow. We'll see how it works out, hopefully with week two. WWF All-Star Wrestling. Catch you later, everybody.